Hey everyone, this is Vincent Teo from HDTV Test here. So three weeks ago, I was given six hours in San Francisco to test the out of LG's new W7 and E7 OLED TVs. I've published a full written article on HDTV Test. You can find the link in the description below. But I also shot a ton of video footage. There's only one problem. LG eventually told me that I can't show any copyrighted material in my video because it might land them into trouble. So to produce this video, I've had to one, crop out some parts of it, two, blur out some parts of it, three, film in such low light condition that half the time you don't actually know what you are seeing. But if you want to find out what sort of improvement you can expect from a 2017 LG OLED TV versus a 2016 model, keep watching. In San Francisco, the pride of place went to the LG Signature flagship W series, which is incredibly thin, measuring only 2.57 mm in thickness, hence the name Wallpaper TV. It's so light and so thin, it can be hung on your wall like an artwork using magnets. The LG W7 Wallpaper TV ships with two remote controls that carry the Signature branding. One is longer with more buttons, the other is smaller with a simplified button layout. The LG W7 Signature Series of OLED TV comes with an all-in-one box that contains the internal video processing and also two tweeters and two woofers for sound output. The cool thing about it is that upon startup, uh, I'll show you here, there will be a very, very theatrical presentation that befits a screen of this quality. The up-firing speakers are raised up from the box itself, giving a sense of drama and theatre to the whole proceeding. As lovely as the W7 was, we actually spent more time with the LG E7 since the E7 received more votes in our Twitter poll asking which one we should test. The design of the E7 is very similar to last year's E6 with a very slim OLED panel that's attached onto a piece of translucent glass as well as bottom-mounted speakers. One small difference is that on the E7, the stand elevates the screen slightly so there will be space between the speakers and the surface on which you'll put the television making it easier to grab hold of the TV for placement. The LG OLED 65E7 comes with one remote control which has the magic remote mouse pointer function. For those of you who frequently stream 4K videos, there are dedicated Netflix and Amazon buttons on the remote. Although all OLED televisions can produce through 0CDM square blacks, getting the area just above black has been more difficult for many manufacturers because of the big jump, so to speak, between the on and off state of OLED technology. Now, 2016 LG OLEDs has been improved versus the 2015 models on this front, but I'm pleased to see that LG has taken it to the next level with their 2017 OLEDs. This is a scene from which I've again shown on the Philips OLED video review uh, where against the night sky. You probably can't see this very clearly from the video because I've intentionally overexposed the video so that you can actually see it but it's going to be extremely difficult for you to see it just because of low light conditions in here. But from where I'm actually standing, the noisiness in the background is clearly noisier and more pixelated on the E6 and it is much cleaner on the E7 this is certainly an improvement in terms of managing the quantization noise and dithering. I'm informed by LG engineers that there are three processes that they have actually implemented to actually get this under control. The first one is an increase in bit depth resolution, especially at the lower end. The second thing is a new dithering algorithm. And the third thing is a new decontouring filter. So in terms of the noisiness, people have been complaining about noisiness, especially on poorly compressed sources near black on LG OLEDs. I believe that this has been eradicated to a negligible degree on the 2017 models. So you shouldn't have any problem watching, let's say, poorly compressed Game of Thrones from Sky on the 2017 OLEDs. In terms of the brightness control itself as well, LG engineers have increased the finesse with which you can adjust the brightness slider control. So you can just hit the correct level of video black on the E7 more accurately versus the 2016 and the 2015 models. Turning our attention to more heavily compressed sources, I'm playing a video clip of on which was captured from satellite without any transcoding whatsoever. I would like to thank Mr. David Lane at flashbacksales.com who supplies high quality audio cables for his help in producing this clip. So what we can see here is that the E7 
Uh, although it's still displaying some quantization noises, some blockimus and compression artifacts in the darker areas, it is much less visible than the E6. Again, you probably can't see it from the camera because I've turned the lights down and I'm intentionally exposing the video to try and elevate the details so that you can actually get an idea. But if you can't see it, you have to take my word that it is actually cleaner and more stable, less pixelated. The blockiness is of a smaller area on the E7. I've put up some test patterns from the excellent ABS HD test disk showing full field test pattern 1% above black, 2% above black, 3% above black, and 4% above black to assess the near black uniformity on the 2017 LG E7 OLED television. Now, as far as we are concerned, there are two main near black uniformity issues on previous LG OLED televisions. The first one is vignetting, where the sides of the display are darker than the center and the second issue is what we call the vertical streaking or vertical banding where there are distinct bands that are slightly darker than the rest. The position of the bands may change from time to time depending on the OLED compensation cycle. So we've put up uh, 1%, 2%, 3% and 4% above black test pattern on the LG E7. We didn't see any vignetting at all and we didn't see any reverse vignetting. The reverse vignetting is sometimes LG implement a brightening at the size. It's an overcompensation really for the vignetting issue on certain late 2015 and early 2016 models. So we didn't see that either. But on a 3% and 4% above black test pattern, there's still some vertical bands running from top to the bottom of the screen. We watched some very very dark content, slow panning shots, and we think that it is not something that will bother most people. Although it is still there when you look at the test pattern, but in a moving real-world content when there's lots of different texture in the background, even with a smooth panning shot, there's very, very little chance that you will actually see this bending, at least in our limited time testing this TV anyway. Cycling through brighter full-field test patterns, the LG OLED 65E7 didn't display any white uniformity issues or color tinting that has affected previous LG OLEDs such as the 2015 EF950 and we have also seen color tinting on the Panasonic 952 OLED television. Cycling through various full field bright patterns, we are pleased to report that there's no white uniformity issues on the LG E7. We loaded up the excellent AVS HD test disk. Upon loading, the first thing we noticed was how much brighter the E7 is on this very, very high APL splash screen. And what LG has done is actually improve the ABL algorithm so that it can maintain its brightness even at high APL. Obviously, there's going to be some dimness. If I actually load a window pattern here, This is a 100% video stimulus window pattern, which is probably about 15% window size. You can see that it's very, very similar, but if you load a 100% video stimulus full field pattern, you clearly see that there's a distinct advantage to the 2017 model in this regard. So the 2017 model probably can hit around 150 nits with full field peak white, whereas the 2016 E6 uh, can usually hit around 120 from our experience. This is another improvement in terms of, it's not drastic, but overall, you know, this increase in luminance output doesn't only apply at peak white, it applies at high luminance as well. So even down to maybe 50% or 60% APL, you'll see a brighter picture, which is less limited by ABL or automatic brightness limiter in your day-to-day -day content. So when you watch uh, ice hockey matches or Apple advertisements, you'll get a much cleaner white that is not dim on the 2017 models versus the 2016 model. LG has improved the upscaling on their 2017 OLED from SD standard definition sources. I've put up a test pattern which is uh, encoded in 576i, that's in PAL. It's the SMPT RP133 test pattern. And the sharpness level remains roughly the same from where I'm standing. But I can clearly see, maybe you can see this from the camera, but I can clearly see that on the E7, it is very, very stable, very, very clean. I've set sharpness to the best possible settings. So there's clearly a step up in terms of the upscaling or up conversion from standard definition sources, which should translate really, really well to standard 
definition broadcast, let's say off-air broadcast from Freeview for channels that are not in high definition. Last year's LG OLED manifested very, very mild undefeatable edge enhancement, uh, even when you turn sharpness all the way down to zero. This year, they have actually fixed that. This is a Luma zone plate pattern, and from where I'm standing, you probably can't see this from the camera, but from where I'm standing, that small circular moires, it has totally disappeared on the E7 with the correct sharpness setting. Yet, the black and white lines remain perfectly sharp and detailed. So, good job LG for fixing this, uh, even though it is probably not noticeable by most people but we are video enthusiasts and we don't want any unnecessary video processing adding to the picture so well done LG for fixing this for 2017 there's been no great change in terms of motion clarity on the 2017 LG OLEDs versus last year's set. I put out this test pattern which I first introduced in my video of the Philips OLED. If I pause the video here it basically consists of many columns, each consisting of four lines running from thick on top of the screen to thin at the bottom of the screen. And the level at which we can still reliably discern all four lines when the lines start scrolling horizontally across is what we call the motion resolution. Now with true motion turned off on this LG E7, the motion resolution came in as expected at 300 lines, which is what we would expect for a sample and hold display. You can increase the motion resolution to 650 lines, that's more than double, by engaging true motion. Let's go into the true motion submenu where they are actually allowing us three options, smooth, clear, and user. So if we engage clear and smooth, the motion resolution will go up to 650 lines, but it introduces unmistakable so opera effect and also interpolation artifacts. So the way to increase motion resolution without these uh, side effects is by using the user control, where you can separately adjust the deblur and each other functions on the set. Because we can't receive any off-air broadcast transmission in this premise where we are conducting this evaluation of the 2017 LG OLED, we are playing a clip that has been captured off-air from satellite without any transcoding whatsoever. I would like to thank Mr. David Lane at flashbacksales.com. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. He sells high-quality cable, and if you need high-quality audio cables without breaking the bank, give his website or give him a call. So he helped us get this clip together. So it is a 1080i 50Hz clip. There's no transcoding whatsoever, so it's a perfect replication of what viewers would actually get at home when they watch football on Sky, watch fast action sports on Sky, or on Freeview HD. And from the LG OLED point of view, it's all in the true motion setting, and I recommend setting true motion to off for the best picture when watching sport. Well, with that setting off, you get no frame skipping, no stuttering, and no interpolation artifact. You can obviously engage true motion to get a slightly higher motion resolution but in our opinion it's not worth the trade-off because you will get interpolation artifacts let's say you will get shimmering artifacts or hallowing around players on the field or when the ball flies past the crowd you'll get breaking up of the ball or shimmering surrounding the ball so i would advise true motion to be switched off in terms of pure motion clarity all consumer oleds are sample and hold display and they are never going to compete with impulse based displays like plasmas and CRTs. I think this is as good as it can get for the 2017 OLED without the help of black frame insertion or BFI. Obviously, for the future, we certainly hope that BFI will be incorporated on the sample and hold displays, but there may be some difficulty in terms of achieving a higher native frame rate or also in terms of the impact on the luminance peak brightness of the display itself. LG is a company who clearly recognizes the importance of input lag in TV purchase decisions, especially for gamers out there. And judging by how the company rolled out a firmware update late last year to implement HDR game mode for their 2016 set owners, this company takes input lag very, very seriously. And I'm pleased to report that the engineers have taken input lag to the next level. If we place a Leo Botna tester, which is connected to a HD Fury integral and also a HD linker for 4K upscaling, to the screen, you'll see that the input lag in HDR game mode, I'll show you that it is actually HDR game mode. So the 
the input lag in HDR game mode is only 21 milliseconds and the same applies to SDR as well. This brings the LG OLEDs on the same level in terms of gaming responsiveness with the Samsung televisions. And OLED has an advantage in the sense because of their self-emissive display characteristics. The blacks will remain very, very inky and not elevated unlike on LED LCD where their backlight has to go up quite high to reach the peak brightness. On OLED, because every pixel can be controlled, switch on and off individually, you can maintain the inky blacks while you still get the peak brightness that HDR games actually demand. Also, another advantage of OLED is their near instantaneous pixel response time. And on fast panning shots, the OLEDs will maintain a very, very clean motion. There may be some blur because of sample and hole, but there won't be any trailing or black smearing like what you see on some VA type LCD panels out there. In short, I think the 2017 LG OLED is a triumph and the W7 and the E7 certainly bodes well for the rest of the 2017 OLED range because all of them should have identical picture quality due to the same SoC being used. Compared with the 2016 models, we have found a host of improvement. Each of them are probably quite small individually. When you add them together, it may be a compelling reason for existing owners to upgrade depending on how much you like 3D. So the improvements as far as we can see are better near black handling, lower input lag, slightly better SD upscaling, motion remains the same and the ABL algorithm has been modified as well to be less aggressive than 2016 LG OLEDs. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for future videos like this. I'll see you the next time.